Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and this evening somebody sent me this. I'm guessing it's a photograph. And wanted to know how they could cut it out. So I made a vector cutout and already sent it, sent the file to them. And, and at the same time, I went on the internet and I just searched and I found almost the exact same one. It's a little bit different. I can't really tell. This one might have been taken at an angle with the humps a little, but it's probably easier to do it off of a clip art. But that's why I'm doing the video to do it off this photograph. So if, to do this, I would crop away everything you don't need and, uh, you know, try to get as small as you can. Now, you see what happened. It took away my other part on the uh, screen because I didn't have this selected when I hit the crop tool. So if you'll select that when you crop it, everything else will stay. So there's a little side note. But then let's go to bitmap and resample. See, it's only 141 dots per inch and it's pretty big. So let's make it 300. Now, as soon as we go to trace, it's gonna ask us to reduce it, but I'm still gonna use clip art. And it's basically reducing it, which I've really never kind of figured out that if it's changing the dots per inch or just the what it's really reducing, but it, it seems to work when you do resample and make it larger. But I've seen some that it will not ask you. So it, it actually traced it pretty good. Now you could play around with the colors, but there's two different colors. So we're just going to say, okay, then let's move my clean copy out of the way. And let's take the background and just delete it and take the inside and just delete. Whoop. Gonna have to break it apart. Well, you know what I did do? I didn't move it away from our other clip art. So I deleted the other clip art is what I did on the first try. So we've got this broken apart or ungroup it. Now we're gonna take away the inside and take away the black. And you could do this two different ways. You could take away the black, which is basically a shadow or you could move the other parts over. And since there is some black edges, we're gonna move the other stuff over. So let's go with, this is 11 and a half inches. Let's make our nudge distance 13. And let's grab this gray and move it over. And see, it's taking away that funny outline. See, that time I got the outline. So if you ever get that, just delete it. We're almost there. Okay, we can delete all this, what I call garbage. Now, you've got two different colors and two different parts. Let's move it to the center of the screen, get it away from there, and let's weld it together. It messed up part of the cross. So that's really kind of not going to work, but we can try. Go left click right click and see it's got this other garbage in there. It's basically got another set of lines that's easily removed just by clicking on it and go up to arrange and break curve apart. Then click on that and just hit delete. Now we're all, we're really already there. It needs a little bit of cleaning up. Like there's a circle of nodes there. Just click on them. You can do that with the pick tool or the shape tool. We've got something kind of funny going on right there. Same thing. It's just some extra garbage. Now we need to kind of straighten up these nodes. And if you have X7 or above, you've got a smoothing tool. But my X7 doesn't work on this computer. So I, I actually use a smoothing tool. Went to another computer to smooth this out. But let's just go to the shape tool. Let's click on our item and see how many nodes there are. So let's select them all and go up right here to reduce nodes and put in the magical number 20. And look at the difference in the nodes. 73 versus 578. So it's a lot less work now that you have to do with it. And really and truly, if you're a laser cutter, whoop, 
grab the wrong thing. If you're a laser engraver, it just needs a little bit of work. This person I'm doing this for was a plasma cutter. So it needs quite a bit of work for plasma cutting because cl plasma cutting uh, the machine goes from node to node. And don't worry when you get something like that, you can always change it. And you got to kind of remember, like I've said in a couple of videos, after you get through with this, this will be your cross or your heart with a cross in it. Like there's two nodes real close together. And the good thing about this, I delete every other node at first and see if it doesn't change it too much. You can always go back. And even with a laser, the least amount of node you have, I think it's going to be the best. Now, you see that I made that kind of a funny shape, but you can always use the handle of your nodes. Now, this is in two parts. And if you're a plasma cutter, that's probably a little bit too sharp. So you could take and make it a little more rounded. And I'm not going to do the whole cross because you get the idea. But since this is in two parts, you can't just do anything to me but the smart fill tool. And then just move your smart fill, your smart away your field in part, and then you could always left click, right click, and you've got a pretty smooth cut. There's a few more, you know, areas right in here that aren't smooth, and uh, but very easily fixed. Playing with your handles. See, even when you delete a node, you could play with the handle. And you could play with this as long as you want. You know, as long as your, your heart's desire. Now, remember, this part was a different part. So let's select it and go and reduce it to 20%. See the difference? It took it down to just 40, well, just two nodes there. Well, I'm, I'm catching both subpaths. But anyway, here's the one I found off clip art that was a little bit easier to trace. It needs some work, but it it came out pretty good. It's a little bit different aspect. So I'm actually going to send them the other one to see which they prefer. But anyway, that's how to vectorize a, basically a photograph of an object. Hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.